All right, I see that the participants have leveled off. So Noel, you know, why don't we kick this off? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All righty, welcome everyone to our big uh, product launch webinar for Prevail University. Uh, before we get started, uh, let me just tell you a couple of ground rules. Today's uh, session is being recorded. Everyone who registered for today's webinar will be um, will be able to receive a link to this recording. Um, other ground rules is that at the end, um, at the end of this uh, session, um, if we have time, we are going to open it up to Q&A. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. So Noel, it's great to be on this side of the camera with you. Uh, normally you and I know each other from Compliance Corner, but it's great to be able to do a webinar with you as well. I know, it's exciting. We've never been able to do this before. It's great. Uh, there's a first time for everything. <laughs> um, so I am Orly Burlov. Uh, for everyone out in the audience, I am the Senior Director of Marketing here at Prevail. Um, and Noel, why don't you introduce yourself? And I'm Noel Vessel. I am the Compliance Officer here at Prevail. All right. Um, and what she's being too modest to tell you is that she has over 15 years of compliance experience in the DOD. She's a registered practitioner. Um, and you are also a, a cyber a CCP, which is the CMMC um, certified professional. All right. Um, so I, Noelle is the perfect person to be to help me explain to you in the audience about what Prevail University is about. Uh, before we jump in and start talking about uh, the rest of the presentation, let's just give some of the context of what Prevail University is. Prevail University is an educational program designed to decrease the burden that our defense industrial based customers are feeling uh, due to trying to meet the CMMC compliance burden. Um, and so with that in mind, we thought that we would do our best to try and create the educational tools that we uh, thought would best help them minimize the burden and help get them to kind of the compliance promised land. Um, and that is based, as Noel knows, you know, from our um, hundreds and hundreds of customers we talk to and prospects we talk to each year. Um, I think this is a, a perfect time to kind of uh, hand the baton to you, um, Noel, and you can tell us a little bit more about that and then kind of uh, introduce our next slide. Yeah, we it, absolutely. And and thank you all for joining us and for being here. We, we are really like, we're just really excited about this because it's an opportunity to make it just a little bit easier, hopefully for members of the DIB. Um, we've We've had a lot of feedback from a lot of different customers and prospects as well, talking about, you know, what, what else do they need? You know, compliance is such a huge bear. And we, I think we're all very aware of that. And we do currently have a, a fantastic compliance documentation package. And we realized that we needed maybe a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of something extra. So sort of like the second tier, if you will. And I think we should just dive into it. All right, let's get started. All right. Uh, so. You know, let's just start off this uh, discussion by um, putting out there that a key part of Prevail University, and we'll discuss it a bit more in the, in the next slide, is documentation. So I think it's important to kind of lay the landscape here, uh, lay the foundation of about the importance of documentation for CMMC and NIST compliance. You know, what are people's current compliance requirements, um, and the role documentation plays in that. Yeah, absolutely, and. And I won't belabor this point since I'm sure that most people who are on this call probably do, you know, have some kind of familiarity with this, but just to make really sure that we level set with everyone. Yeah, your current compliance requirements uh, focus mostly, you know, the big, the big elephant in the room, if you will, is DFAR 7012. If you are a DIB contractor, either subcontractor or prime, then you have a you either have a flow down or you have a direct responsibility to to adhere to NIST 80171 compliance, which is 110 different cybersecurity related controls. So that is that is the current requirement you have right now. CMMC, of course, is is not actually technically law yet, but again, CMMC is only a certification process. It does not change that you still have the requirement today, even if you have just one contract or you're just one subcontractor on one DOD contract, you do have the responsibility to adhere to NIST 80171. Yep, and so. You know, one thing that we know from our own experience is that contractors can be called on for an assessment at any time. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because of DFAR 7020, 
uh, which most, I, I think pretty much every single contract that's out there just about in the DOD has a 7020 clause. DFAR 7020 states that the DOD can at any time assess you for any reason. They do not have to give you an excuse or a reason or anything. They can just say, hey, I need to do this assessment. So yeah, it's it. you've already agreed to it. Basically. Right. Yeah. And we know this uh, empirically as well. One of our own customers um, just got the knock on the door, so to speak, yep. saying, hey, get ready. We're coming. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I think it's important to highlight the uh, documentation that you need, uh, the role documentation plays in this. Absolutely. I mean, I've discussed this a lot on Compliance Corner, um, yeah. <laughs> but let's just reiterate it here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I definitely suggest if you have any questions about, you know, that type of stuff, how important documentation is and and all of that, you know, certainly reach out to us here at Prevail. You can always reach out to the compliance team at compliance at prevail.com. We're happy to answer those questions as they come up. But documentation, as I, I've said it many times, and documentation is pretty much paramount for compliance. The technology part for a lot of companies can be not necessarily easier, but sometimes less, less cumbersome than the documentation part because there's so many different policies, procedures, and, and things you need to make sure that you have documented because that documentation, like when we were just talking about, for example, if the DIBCAC decided to just knock on your door today and asked you for information, they would ask you for documentation about your compliance program, your right. SSP, your CRMs for any sort of external server, service providers you work with. They are going to want documentation. And if that documentation is not up to snuff, they will then come in and do a full audit. So documentation can really save you on a multitude of levels in compliance. That sounds painful. Um, so the re and the reper repercussions of failing to meet the standards, um, yeah, pretty severe. Uh, I mean, we for yes. example, we saw that with uh, was it Aerojet, mm -hmm. uh, Rocket yep. Dime. You yep. know, there was a huge fine there a couple of years back uh, mm -hmm. in the millions of dollars. Um, but that's 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 one example. I think uh, we also want to talk about you know you you have signed a document by taking a DOD contract that you are going to meet the NIST, uh, the NIST 800-171 requirements. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the False Claims Act? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, um, it, it's amazing to me how many people are still not aware of it. And I'll be honest, I spent 15 years in the DOD and I didn't know about the False Claims Act until like year 14. So um, it's, it's not as common as I wish it was. Uh, the False Claims Act has been around since like the Civil War, basically, yep. and it's, it is an act. Abraham Lincoln. There you go. It is an act that the government can use if they feel in any way that they have not gotten what they paid for in a contract. So it's essentially their way of reaching out and saying, hey, you you told us you were going to do X and you didn't do X, you did Y, and that's not what we asked you to do. And then they can take legal action as necessary. Where this comes into play with the NIST 171 compliance and CMMC eventually is that the DFAR 7012 clause and DFAR 7019 and DFAR 7020, those are all contractual obligations that when you sign that contract and start getting paid for that work, you are essentially saying every time you get a paycheck from them, yep, I'm doing what you said that I have to do. If they find out and for any reason, and there's a multitude of ways they could find out that you're not doing this. Let's say for the sake of argument, you have an incident, they come in right. and investigate you. Let's say that there's a whistleblower, which there's a lot of like whistleblower incentives, by the way. Um, if you are not aware of those, that's definitely something to look into. So you would end up in a situation where the DIBCAC or the CCFI, which is the Civil Cyber Fraud Initiative, which is a right. branch and arm of the um, False Claims Act, they would actually come in and investigate you. And again, much yeah. like what I just mentioned before, if the documentation isn't something that they think is enough, then they go to a full assessment. And if you don't pass that full assessment, then you end up, or you could end up in the air dive, you know, the ro air dive. Aerojet, rocket dive. Aerojet, uh, rocket dive. There, I was trying okay, to, yeah. exactly. So yeah, definitely huge repercussions possibly for this, this sort of thing, definitely. So I think that the next point, you know, I think we've laid the groundwork of why people are uh, challenged by compliance, you know, the, or at least the compliance requirements. We know from our own experience of talking to uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of potential cust uh, potential customers and customers, that is a real challenge for them to get on board with uh, the compliance um, the compliance journey. Um, really? And you know, as you said earlier, people have needed more help, and so that is why we created Prevail University. Yeah. Um, and what else would you add to that in terms of kind of just letting people know about the how how this 
the purpose of Prevail University? Yeah, absolutely. So everything you just said, a hundred percent true, because um, this is something that we, we, this whole idea of Prevail University really did come from feedback from customers, from, from prospects, just like you said, it directly came from them saying, yeah, your current co compliance package is great, but there's another piece to it. So the current compliance package that we have is fantastic. And it's been really helpful to a lot of different customers. And, and we're so happy for that. But we started getting feedback that there are those more artifact or evidence-based sort of documents. They can be procedural documents or plan documents, stuff that's sort of the supplement to the SSP a lot of the time. So we started getting a lot of questions about that. A lot like, well, hey, you know, do you guys have something like that? And we didn't. So hence Prevail University was born because we realized that it wasn't just the documents that we needed, but we also needed education for everyone on how to use the documents. What, what does, how do those documents actually address the different controls? So we also started, you know, deciding that we needed to have videos to explain these things. And then we were really excited that we have a C3PAO family that has been a partner network that's been amazing. And they have also offered to help us out and sort of explain different parts and, and pieces of things to everyone in each of these videos. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more in a second, but that's the, the reason for it was really because of the fact that we were getting so much feedback from people that they still needed help. They needed that second tier, if you will, of, of additional right. documents and artifacts. One thing we should note um, is that uh, this whole documentation package and Prevail University is based on what we articulated as a sample company. What can you say about how that sample company is constructed? Yep, absolutely. So um, the sample company is just a 20 person company. They have some people who are on site at a government facility. They have some people at a headquarters location. They have some people remote. Pretty much everything they do CUI, ITAR, FCI wise is digital, but they do have one, I think, yeah, it's just one filing cabinet at a headquarters in, in the CISO's office that has paper CUI in it, but otherwise everything is digital and they keep everything on the Prevail Enclave and they are a Microsoft 365 commercial shop. Right. And so any semblance to actual companies living or dead is purely coincidental. Purely coincidental, <laughs> I'm sure that's like almost exactly verbatim what like half of our customers are doing, but yes. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but it's typical of, yes, of a company in the dip. So very why don't you talk a little bit about what's included um, in Prevail University? We see you here three bullet points, the videos, the sample artifacts, and the C3PO. Why don't you go one step further in describing those? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'd be happy to. So the 14 videos, each one of the NIST family. So and this is the current NIST families in Rev2, which is 14. Each one of those is going to have a video that's somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour long. It will go through different controls that were listed on the DIBCACs other than satisfied PowerPoint that came out a few months ago. So they did sort of a, an evaluation of all of the different controls that they've evaluated you know, thus far you know, as the DIBCAC and has said, okay, these are the ones that we see the most common that are going to be other than satisfied, meaning that they could cause someone to you know, fail their assessment. So I went through there, or we went through there and, and looked at all of those different controls and took like two or three for each family that were on that other than satisfied, those sort of stumbling blocks for a lot of companies. And we sort of do an overview of each of those controls, have a sort of discussion about what that really means for that control. And then uh, walk through exactly how the artifacts can help address those individual controls, be that support system, you know, with the, it's sort of supporting the SSP. And then right. the last 15, 20 minutes of each of the videos is going to be that conversation with one of our C3PAO partners and having a conversation about how they would assess those different controls that we talked about. What kind of things are they looking for? What example evidence would they want to see? And also most importantly, what stumbling blocks and mistakes have they seen most common with that? So it's been, I feel that part I think is so essential to just have those right. sites. It's amazing, right? You know, to have that education, it's just, I think it'll be really, really incredible for all of our, our customers, hopefully. Now, we already have a Prevail compliance package um, yeah. that you know we've sold to many of our existing customers. How does Prevail University differ from that? Yeah, that's a, that is an excellent question. So like I kind of alluded to before, the current package that we have is really your baseline. That's your foundation. You have to have an SSP. You have to have a POEM list. You have to make sure you have a CRM. It's, these are things that you have to have. And I think that what we have is, is really an amazing offering. And we've gotten such great feedback from, from customers and continuously are making it better and improving it. 
But again, that's just the baseline. So there's all those supporting documents that are outside of the SSP. So right. if, for example, if I'm talking about in my SSP about limiting users access, a supporting document would very likely be a user list saying this is the user, this is what kind of access they have, et cetera. That document would be most likely separate from an SSP because if you put it in the SSP, that's something that you're going to have to update all the time and then update the whole SSP every time, which doesn't really make sense. Right. So those supporting documents, that's exactly what, why that's different and why it is sort of piggybacks on top of what we already have. In fact, it's, it's a perfect sort of like marriage between the two of them because you've got that foundational part and then you've got, you know, think of it like building a house. Like you've got the framework, you've got all the, you know, all the bones are there in the compliance package we have now. We're just looking to pretty things up a bit. So I know you prepared a couple of uh, samples uh, that people should look at. Let me stop sharing the screen and hand it, uh, the baton over to you. So why don't you tell Thank people you. what they're going to be looking at? Certainly. So uh, the first thing that we're going to look at just while I'm sort of getting this all set up, the first thing we're going to look at is an example of what we call our standard operating procedures. And these these are all, first and foremost, all of these files that are in Prevail University are all in Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and none of them are locked down. They can all be adjusted, however, because remember, these are all based on an example company. So of course, it's it's not going to apply to every single company that's out there. So you need to be able to edit anything that you want to. So Anything that you see here can obviously be edited or moved around or whatever you need to do once you are a Prevail University customer. So just wanted to make that clear. But the first thing that we're going to look at, which is a question I get all the time, is do you guys have any sort of incident response plan I could look at? And my answer up till now has been, well, no, <laughs> we, we don't have that. Until now. Until now. So this is um, this first page that you see here of the incident response. So this is the incident response plan that is a part of the the Prevail University offerings for the incident response planning family, excuse, incident response family. So this is just a more detail about that example company at the front. This is obviously just letting you know that this has to be updated, you know, because it's, it's based on a fake company. This is an executive authority page. What this is essentially doing is making it very clear that the CEO is giving the executive authority to administer the incident response plan to the people who are listed within the document. This is really this is a really important piece that a lot of people forget. Um, and you notice here at CEO, you could have anybody on executive staff, but it does need to be an executive staff person signing that. We got a version history, very straightforward. This is just general information. And then you go down to the overview. So if you notice here, this is prepare, detect, analyze, contain, recover, and user response. These are all different, different pieces and parts of the incident response family, like different controls address different pieces of this. So that's why we have that here all written out. And then each one of those individual steps is explained here. And it goes into detail. This, again, we treated this like a real company. What would we do from a compliance standpoint if this was a real company and an incident response plan? So you notice here, you've got an entire process of reporting an incident, You know what examples of what types of incidents could be. And you've got the incident response team, which has to you know, obviously has to be a part of this. We've got some fake people here at our fake company who are on the incident response team. What detection would look like and what, I mean, it's it's little things like even this. What does an incident response repository look like? What is the naming convention for each file? Where are they kept? Who has access? All of that kind of thing. So you've really kind of thought through every potential kind of um, possible iteration of what a customer uh, company might need and Doing the best provided, provided it in a document that people essentially now have an opportunity to customize to their particular particular need. Exactly. That's exactly it. And it's it just gives you, as you can see, like this is just examples of, okay, here's what low things would look like, medium things would look like, what would high things look like? And it gives you what does that look like? What, what, you know, here's an example of what that would look like. What actually happens then? And who is right. contacted, who's involved, et cetera. So exactly your point. This is, this is all just so everyone can take this information and update it as needed for right. what they have going on in their own situation. And at the very end, we have a signature page for the employees. So this is something that employees would sign. And this actually would be signed annually just to validate their continued commitment. And you would keep a copy of this, you know, wherever it would be, maybe prevail would be so a good this, place to do things. So this is, just, and this is just one of over 30 documents right. that um, is included in the package. Correct. 
And so another one I'll, I'll walk through really quickly, just not to take up too much time, but um, so exactly. So this is actually from the access control family. So this is one you of have the-, the whole Microsoft family here. You have Word, <laughs> you have Excel, you have Power. Check in all the boxes. Yes, got to get all of, I'll get, it's like Pokemon, right? You got to get a patch them all. So we've got, um, again, the example, same kind of thing here with this read first is essentially the exact same thing we just saw. Version history is right here. But this is where the kind of the meat and potatoes is. So we've got the prevail universe, like this is the prevail user access list. So like the first person we have here is Jenna Foster. She's an administrator. You've got all the information about her responsibilities and what she is and is like what she's able to do you know, in that role. You know, does she have a separation of user functionality? Does she have access to cryptographic keys to VoIP? Can they publicly post? Is there some sort of company assigned asset? And you'll see the same thing here on the Microsoft list. And then there's the public posting list, which is another part of access control that needs to be addressed. So this, this one file here addresses or supports in some way, probably at least a dozen, like I would say a dozen controls slash, object slash objectives throughout the access control family. So that's one of the reasons why we kind of tried to make it as concise as we could. So it was just easier to, to find all these things. Same thing here with, you know, physical. So remember there was physical CUI in this example company. So you have to have a physical CUI, you know, user access list. And this company happens to use Sentinel. So we've got that information here. And then the same signature page that we saw before. So you're seeing there's a similarity and sort of a, a consistency of formatting and flow. So it's hope, hopefully to make it a little bit easier for you can jump around a little bit easier because you know what to expect and what to find. This is really, really powerful, um, Noel, for a potential company. Oh, absolutely. And on top of that, just the very last thing, and then we will be done, is uh, we very quickly wanted to show, we also even have on the instant response, again, you have, and this is an example tabletop exercise. So this is training that could be done and could be used by any company. And it goes into multiple different scenarios different things that could be talked about and discussed and even you know reviews of the after action report at the end. So this is this is also something that's really helpful and really useful to a lot of customers who are looking to have some sort of training with this and don't really know where to start. So yeah, we've got a lot of different pieces of information in here. So look and I and I checked the PowerPoint box now too. So I think that though the thing that really strikes me about all of this and why this is such an incredible package is that you've kind of taken all of the headaches that you've heard about for in the past year and a half that you have been here at Prevail and kind of you know listened to all of those challenges and uh, tried to create the like ultimate uh, compliance package in terms of SOPs, uh, videos, and kind of like um, you know uh, advice from a C3PO saying, Okay, and now that you have those videos and that documentation, you have that C3PO saying, and when you implement that particular program at your um, at your home, know that this is what uh, we have seen other companies trip up on in their implementation. What we know we'll be looking at, and our uh, colleagues in the um, in the industry will be looking at. So it's it's kind of like having the cheat sheet. It abs that is actually a really good way of putting it, and that was exactly the the idea kind of behind it. And when, you know, when I was going through and creating a lot of these things, that was, that was my thought, you know, I have myself implemented these, these controls at a company. And so I put myself back, you know, put that hat back on and said, okay, right. if I'm implementing this, okay. And now I have all these lessons learned that I didn't have the first time around. Which is so right. obviously I want to make sure that I can impart those lessons as much as possible. And it, so you're exactly right. The whole point of Prevail University is just make it as easy as possible for everybody and, and hoping that it will cut down a little bit on the stress, I mean, even just a teeny exactly. bit will help. <laughs> um, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, kind of talk about for a moment or two what what um, this will cost individuals who are looking to get started. So, um, and actually before we jump there, let's just give, give a quick um, discussion of kind of where this fits in the whole compliance um, compliance sequence, right? The idea here is that people first deploy Prevail, you have our compliance documentation package, and then Prevail University. Um, and then do you want to take it from there? Just describe these. Sure. Last yeah, absolutely. So like you said, you, you've got Prevail University. We're assuming that you've updated everything to, to make sense for your own organization. And you've taken your compliance bundle, the, the original compliance documentation package and updated all that too. So you've got your SSP, you've got your POAMs, you've got your 
Prevail University procedures that you've updated, you know, you're ready to go, then you go ahead and get a gap assessment with an RPO, or you can also use a C3PAO depending but on what kind of assessment, you know, pre-assessment you're looking for. You meet with that person, you have a conversation, you, you know, you make sure that they understand what you need and what you're looking for, and then they give you feedback. So if there's any sort of gaps or anything that you need to address, then you would go ahead and address that. And then at, at that point, when you're feeling really confident, you've got that sort of, you know, extra special stamp from the RPO or C3PAO that you worked with, you then go to an assessment. So you go to it at the full, the real deal, go to the assessment, you schedule it with, you know, hopefully one of our partners. And you, I mean, the goal obviously is to make it super easy and it, the assessment is going to take like five minutes and it's going to be great. <laughs> Everything's going to be wonderful and it'll be done. I mean, obviously not, but if only, but yeah, that is our goal is to get you to that sort of, I wish we had like just a little, like, like a big checkbox or like a yay at the end, you know, like you did it, you're, you're done. So yes, that is, that is our goal exactly to get you to that full assessment, to being done, to having those 110 controls done as much as possible. All right, so let's just talk for a moment about the pr uh, pricing details. First question, when is this available? Now. Now. <laughs> now? Like now, 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 now? Now. Right now. Right now. It's happening oh, right now. <laughs> right now. So um, I guess if I'm uh, someone who wants to get this, how will updates to the package be handled? Because obviously as um, CMMC and NIST have iterations and changes, these videos and documentations will need to be updated. Yeah, absolutely. So we will we'll make those updates um, when we when we think they need to happen. Obviously, I mean, little updates. We're not going to you know blast everybody if like I forgot a period somewhere and I have to change it. But yeah, if there's anything sort of like a, a larger scale update, usually what we do is is let people what we it's basically the same thing we're doing with our compliance documentation package now. We let our customers know if there has been you know some kind of like huge update. Otherwise. Our current compliance documentation package just has like a little update tracker where you can see, you know, if any little updates have been done, it'll be the same situation with this. So um, we will update it as much as is necessary and we'll add things as they come up. Also, the more feedback we get from, from different members of the DIB, from our C3PAO partners, from RPOs and consultants and MSPs and everybody else in the space, we will take that information. I mean, I've already made a couple updates this week. Like I thought I was done at the beginning of the week and I've already added a couple of things this week. So it's, right. it's very easy. The more people, the more eyes we get on this, the more information we're going to have. And the more, the more easily it will be to say, oh, we need this or we need that and where our gaps are. So, and we will just make sure that everyone is alerted to those big, those big updates. Usually, you know, we send emails out, but if we decide there's a different way of doing it, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. Yeah. Um... So pricing, uh, that's always an important thing. It is. <laughs> this is weird for us. We never talk about this. <laughs> this is new. Um, so I, you can see on the screen, it's it's twenty eight eighty for the standard price for year one. But notice that there is a June special. So obviously we're still in June for what fifteen more days, I think. So two weeks. Mm -hmm. So for the next fifteen days, it's nineteen twenty, which is the cost of our foundational compliance package. So that is 33% discount. And then for both of them, you're at the 1440 for future years. And that's, and the reason why we say it's 1440 for future years is just what you and I were talking about early. As this goes along, there will be updates to this information. Right. There will be things added to it. It's, it's probably going to be pretty, pretty consistently. There's going to be things added to it, updated, changed. And again, as things change, like for example, eventually when Rev3 comes out or, you know, updates to, you know, for Rev5, if they apply to anything with FedRAN, I mean, there's so many different things in the CMMC and NIST 800-171 and just compliance space in general that can shift. So that's why that price is reduced, obviously, but is still a price since we are still going to be updating it. And most importantly, if you are interested in this, um, do contact our customer success uh, managers, um, Emily and or Megan, depending on yes. who is your customer success manager. And you can get them at customer success, C-U-S-T-O-M-E-R-S-U-C-C-E-S-S -S -S at prevail.com. Exactly. Um, and what else do we have to tell people? I think that's it. Yeah. We're at time. We are at that's time. it. Um, all right. Well, we said we'd be half an hour. We don't want to keep people over, uh, but uh, we will, I noticed there are a couple of questions that we didn't get to. We will follow up with you individually. Thank you everyone for your time. Um, it has been a pleasure to be able to uh, give you all this information about our newest offering here at Prevail. Super excited about it. 
I hope uh, this uh, webinar has answered a lot of your questions. I'm sure you'll have more. So do reach out, out to us. Um, and thank you for joining. Thank uh, you so much. Off. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.